From Connecticut's news leader, this is NBC Connecticut heard today. Christina Aguilera skipped a line or two during her performance. Instead of singing or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, she repeated an earlier line. And now for the other big talker from the Super Bowl, we're talking about the ads, right? Steve Wolfberg from Cronin and Company is back to take a look at some of the best and the worst. Nice to join us again. Yeah, it's nice Steve. to be back. Thank you. So, since we last talked early yep. this morning, let's talk off. Let's start off with one of the big hits, and that was the VW Star Wars commercial. Let me just tell you that it was such a success. The little boy who plays Darth Vader was unveiled and oh. shown in the Today Show because okay, everybody. Perfect. It was a collective awe. He was the cutest little boy, <laughs> and the commercial was so successful. Yeah, what a wonderful little actor to be able to convey what he's trying to convey without without any words, just by his gestures within that costume. I love that spot. I mean, it was a wonderful bit of storytelling, uh, a little bit of demonstration. It was just nice and just charming, and uh, so much of the stuff in the Super Bowl is not that. Mm -hmm. And you're watching this commercial, wondering what's going to happen next, mm -hmm. and in so many, again, of the commercials in the Super Bowl, be it for Pepsi Max or with oh. Bud Light or whatever it is, you know where those spots are going. Mm -hmm. You never really knew with this spot, and I think that makes it a very a very fun spot. I think you're right. On the flip side, that's what, what makes the other ones flops, or the fact that they're just so predictable. Pretty much so. You Pretty know. much so. You know that, that what's going to happen, mm -hmm. someone's going to be hit by a, a soda can, yeah. and uh, someone's going to do something creepy with a bag of Doritos. So, so that's a Doritos, <laughs> uh, the pug commercial. Well, yeah, that, or the guy with licking fingers and Check this out. Grabbing the guy's pants because he, whatever. It was it was just wrong on a lot of reasons, in my opinion. But these did very well. This this particular one uh, was one of the winners in the ad meter uh -huh. poll, as was a Bud Light spot. So, uh, you know, that's what's so much fun about the ad business. You never know what anybody's going to like. Uh, you know, the one, I don't know if you remember the homeaway.com, the one that had, I guess it was. Uh, With the test baby? Yes. Yeah, I mean. I thought it was interesting until I saw the baby being just like smacked against the wall. And I'm thinking, no. Yeah, it's, no, it's. No, no. it's it's funny when a pug hits a glass door and kind of pushes it through, but yeah. when a baby, even though it's a toy, does that, uh, that was a l that was cr pretty creepy. That was not one of my favorites, and it wasn't a lot of people's favorites either. Do you feel as if some of these ads jump the shark? Like they <laughs> try so hard to be over the top and with over the top animations, right. and sometimes are the talking baby. Yeah, the talking baby to me. Yeah, a lot of people love it. I'm a little tired of it. The, the chimps, uh, the, any animal that speaks or does things it shouldn't do, uh, <laughs> like the dogs who were serving the beer and, and, and grilling at the barbecue. I think those, I'm just a little tired of those types of things. That's why I like stories being told, like like the Passat spot, like the M&M uh, for, for, &M for the one. Chrysler commercial. It was okay. just a wonderfully no, engaging commercial, and, and there it is now. Just, you never, you don't know what's happening there, and then ultimately you see it's revealed an in, in M&M representing the comeback of, of Detroit uh, and the comeback of the auto industry, perhaps. I thought it was a very compelling two-minute commercial. Well, yeah, two minutes, and then that's at $3 million for every 30, 30 seconds. seconds. So do the math. Oh that's my. that's about $12 million for that. Well, Eminem was in two commercials, right? He was. He was also in a, an, an ST Brisk uh, commercial, and that, to me, was not nearly as compelling as, uh, as this one he did for Chrysler. As an advertiser, do you think that it's interesting that they would use the same subject for two different commercials? Why would the other one want him still? Well, I mean, they're done at such different times yeah. during the year, and you don't really know what spot's going to go on the Super Bowl yeah. um, when you're shooting it necessarily. I think Brett Favre was in three commercials last year, so oh, I mean, I you, know you, you never okay. really know what's going to happen. Well, you have some numbers. Yeah, the, the ratings are starting to come in, uh, okay. and that uh, it was a 48 rating. Now, a rating is of all the people who have televisions, mm -hmm. how many were watching that game, okay. and a 48 rating, which tied the highest rating for a Super Bowl since 1987, and a 71 share of the people watching television, how many were watching the Super Bowl, 71% were, and that's the highest since 1982. Oh, so very, very very popular. I uh, don't know how many millions of people watched, but pretty sure it's going to be over 100 million people watched it. A lot of eyes were on these a commercials. A lot of eyes. And it's interesting. I don't know if it was Bob or someone after the, VF, the VW mm -hmm. commercial. They said, maybe I might want to get a Volkswagen. Well, that's the ultimate <laughs> win. Score, right? Yeah, bing, bing, bing. That's what we're doing it for, folks. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and again, just talking about this, this oh, this oh. one. <laughs> what an Ozzie unlikely combo. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne and Justin Jesus. Bieber. I got the concept talking about technology. Uh, 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 yep different generations. Yeah, it's the buyback program at, at Best Buy, uh, and if you if your if your uh, piece of equipment becomes obsolete, well, we'll buy it back. So, Ozzy perhaps representing the obsolete, and Justin Bieber, the modern day. And the funnest part about that is you see it right there. The gentleman behind there is actually Justin Bieber in disguise. So, with him saying he sounds like a girl and the funny stuff going on, I like the spot more than I thought I would, mm -hmm. and uh, it was enjoyable, actually. And you broke that news to me. I had no idea. Yeah. And a lot of people, they have to watch it a second or a third time to realize that 
that is Justin which Bieber. is part of the reason why all the searches all the twittering all the all that stuff that's uh, pretty sharp. That's part of the social networking that's so important about all of the Super Bowl work but again you're saying the simple story is what captures at least your attention at least mine mm -hmm. that's just my opinion and I some others you. as well okay well good you have good taste <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. I always love it when my you pleasure. come to chat thank with you. us. Thanks, Steve. And Super Bowl 45 may be in the books.